what's up? Uh, back at the shop, as you can see. Got a little bit of an unboxing today. Uh, especially from the powder coaters, all that stuff is complete. Uh, we got the valve covers in, and we got all those miscellaneous brackets and whatnot, as well as the intake pipe that goes into the turbo. And today I can finally mount the, put the hood latch on with that center uh, radiator support uh, thing, the front mount intercooler, and my phone. And uh, the intake manifold got powder coated as well. However, I need to make sure this gasket is still good. Uh, but anyways, valve cover is still wrapped up. Everything else is in that box. And he went ahead. Vic ordered the JDM power steering reservoir for the... Uh, is it the IS200? I believe. Anyways, on NA2Js, the reservoir sits right here, directly on top of the pump. And uh, while well, it gets in the way of the intake manifold, of the GTE intake manifold that runs straight forward, which we're, what we're using, um, it's going to mount up here on the strut tower in a factory location. That way, it's going to clear the intake manifold and the throttle body and whatnot. So let's go ahead and see what we got. Wow, just unbelievable. Custom coatings and Opalaka, they did an amazing job. Amazing, phenomenal. Here's the intake pipe. It just looks like unbelievable. This engine, this engine is going to fuck. Guaranteed. Look at this intake manifold. I mean, just look at that. I'm so hyped right now at how good this looks. So all this is just uh, random miscellaneous brackets. Um, these are the rings that go above the, on top of the strut tower, but I don't want to put those on or unwrap them until I get the uh, coilovers on. Uh, yeah, this is the center section for the radiator support. I also have the fuel rail right here, both wiper arms for the front, and the heat shield that we made for the uh, intake filter. So that's what's going to go and uh, around that pipe to shield it from all the heat from the engine. Other than that, uh, power steering reservoir. For today, I'm going to go ahead and put these valve covers back on and get the front of the uh, car assembled, put back together. Uh, one more thing he did buy that came in was a uh, new muffler. I don't know what brand it is. But, you know, it's like one of those old school Apexy ones. Probably a knockoff, but whatever. No big deal. No shame. But yeah, um, for the most part, Put the camera down right now, get these valve covers thrown in, front of the car assembled, and we'll see what it looks like afterwards. I'm fucking stoked. What I'm looking at right now is just, it's fucking art. You ready? Look at that. I don't know if pictures could even do this justice, but just looking at it in person is unbelievable. They did a fantastic job. Custom coatings up a lot. I'm going to drop a link uh, in the description down below uh, to their Instagram. It's just insane. Insane. All right, guys, I hope you can see me right now. Um, part two of this video. I'm fucking tired. I'm not really in the mood to film. I'm going to do it regardless, just for you guys. 
Um, basically on my way over to the IS300. Uh, Vic's waiting on me there. He brought some more parts. He brought the manual brake pedal, which is has a different like bend in it and obviously the foot pad is smaller so we're gonna go ahead and swap that out uh, the other day I mounted the front my intercooler and the smaller like bumper supports that go on the corners under the lights we went ahead and mounted uh, the hood latch uh, hood catch assembly I just scuffed it up real quick cleaned it up and uh, put a couple of coats of black spray paint over it, installed that center section of the radiator to support, and then uh, today we're going to be working on the fuel line, fuel pump, getting the hot side of the intercooler piping on, that's it. Uh, pretty soon we'll be ready for for the wiring harness, I want to put the, uh, the engine harness onto the engine, uh, see where I can tuck some things. just go from there then I can start working on that chassis harness getting it all extended and cut and tucked after that the fenders can go on and I think when the fenders get put on that's gonna be like a huge milestone for me um, obviously before starting the car making sure it runs and all that but anyways we'll be there in one second How hyped are you right now? Super hyped though. Too much hype. Yeah. Alright, so uh second half of this video. Uh basically we got the intercooler mounted, the intake air filter on the turbo was on. Uh we brought the intercooler piping. I already have the cold side on the intake manifold. The IS200 uh, power steering reservoir is mounted to the strut tower right there and that's basically to make room for the GTE style front facing intake manifold uh, we had to bounce I had to drill some holes in the strut tower here using two bolts bolted directly into there um, yeah heat shield intake more dress up bolts the hood latch cleaned it up put a couple of coats of black spray paint on there to clean it up and uh, as far as the intercooler goes i'm gonna have to make a bracket for the bottom of it just to pull it out a little bit because right now it's resting on the power steering cooler which isn't cool so um vic also brought me the manual brake pedal so i'm gonna go ahead and install that now and then after that, we're gonna work on the fuel system. So, see you guys in a bit.
All right, fuel pumps in. Um, fuel pressure regular right there. And we got this. Vic, tell them what this is. Um, that's a Cusco uh, Poppy um, you know, radiator cooling plate. Doesn't really add a lot of horsepower, but fucking sure looks good. It's my opinion. I know it's blue. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. It is a Cusco part though, so you get JDM. Yeah, that JDM color. JDM high beast points. Uh, you got newspaper to match it up. Japanese newspaper. I think I know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, for the most part, we'll, we're going to keep this in a plastic for now until the car is completely done because I don't want this to get scratched up or whatever. So I'll take care of that. Um, yeah, like I said earlier, we we're talking about the oil cooler. This is a factory 7M oil cooler off the MK3 Super that we had. Uh, I mean, it could work. However, there's no there's no brackets on it. Nowhere for me to fabricate brackets, and I really don't feel like welding to this. So I think we're gonna set this aside. Vic's gonna go ahead and order a new cooler. Something a little bit bigger, something nicer. That's all beat up. I'm not feeling that on this nice car. So we'll probably stick it somewhere in here behind the inner cooler. Um, I still need to make a bracket to pull it out a little bit, like I said earlier. And here's the fuel line we got to put in now. So we got to climb under the car, rip all that old shit out, put it in, and after that's going to be the brake pedal. So let's get on that now. That's going to work. These two are the brake lines. And these are fuel, so I gotta take these out and then mount the brake lines back to the chassis along with the new fuel line. I gotta find out where the fuck everything goes. As needed. <laughs> Alright, we finally got the fuel system figured out. Uh, like I said, all this all this stuff, this, these engine, this engine, transmission, fuel lines, everything came from another IS300 that Vic used to own. Um, we're just transplanting it into a new shell because that car was crashed. Anyways, so we just now figured out the fuel system. Mind you, this is like putting a puzzle together without any instructions. 
Um, my pops is the one who originally put this engine together in the first car, and then Vic came to me to do the new shell because my pops has been busy with other shit. Um, so anyways, this fuel system that my pop designed. Um, so we finally put the fuel pressure regulator back in. I got it plumbed, figured out how it went. Um, this fuel rail feeds from both ends from the uh, feed line that goes from the tank. And then in the center is the return. So I know IS 300s don't have a return from factory. This is what threw me off. So we have this metal line here with AF fittings and a flex line that goes up over the fuel tank. This is the new feed with an inline filter. Now for the return that we're gonna do, we're gonna utilize the factory feed line and use that as the return. That's how it was set up with the uh, new fuel pump that we put in this morning. Uh, it took a while for me to figure this out, but I had to consult my pops. He remembered what he did all those years ago. And uh, I just went ahead and ripped out the old uh, EVAP lines there. Uh, I just cut them. I didn't take them off fully because that would have required us to drop the differential. So I just cut it right there where they started to go up into the chassis. And then uh, eventually when we do drop the differential to weld the diff, all that emission scrap is going to come out as well. But for now, we just cut those uh, those fume hoses. I was going to say like that. Then I'm going to go ahead and uh, install this line, plumb it. I have to mount the inline fuel filter with this bracket and a couple of self-tappers. I got to find a good location for that. And then after that, we can button up all the uh, underbody panels and, and, and trays and shit like that and put that... Uh, fuel tank strap back into the car and hang it back up properly. And other than that, uh, I know I've been saying this, but then after the fuel system's done, then we're going to start putting that brake pedal in, and then the interior will be mostly complete, and we might even put in the harness part too. So a little change of pace from working on the outside of the car, of the car to working inside of the car and doing cosmetic shit. So other than that, let's get started. All right, guys, the uh, passenger side harness bar is in. Check this out, you see how, uh, so we got the button there to raise and lower the seatbelt. Well, on the driver's side, we had to remove that button because on the driver's side, that button faces towards the rear, interfering with that bracket. So anyways, there's the button right there on the floor I took off. So you gotta lower the seat, but all the way down. Obviously, because these are these uh, bright seats sit pretty low already. We're gonna keep the factory seat belts just so that you know we don't make any uh, any police officers angry out there. You know, you safety nerds. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and attach these lower support bars to where the seat belt bolts up to down to the bottom, and then we need to find the hardware that bolts up the harness bar to the top bracket. I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's, it's just brutally hot today. Um, I don't know, what do you think? After this, after this harness bar's in, <laughs> we're gonna fucking call it a day. <laughs> oh shit, I still got the brake pedal. That's no big deal though. All right, after the brake pedal, we'll call it a day, good? Alright guys, uh, I'll grab the camera again once the uh, harness part is in, we're ready to put the Takata harnesses in. Cool. All 
All right, so basically, um, Vic bought a brand new clutch pedal for a manual from uh, the Lexus dealership or Toyota. And uh, the weird shit was it came with the, uh, a different style brake light switch. And this piece was like riveted, literally, to the brake pedal. But it was riveted in a fucked up spot where the uh, brake booster uh, was, was supposed to bolt to. So basically I had to get a chisel and hammer this thing off of the brake pedal, break the rivets, get it off, which is fucked up because I feel like, you know, it came on the brake pedal, it's just like a mint ass fucking, you know, OEM clutch pedal straight from the dealership brand new with zero miles on it. And I kind of like, I didn't fuck it up. But like, just having to, to hammer this fucking, these rivets out was kind of kind of like hurt my feelings a little bit. So I'm a little bothered about it, but you know, the factory pedal didn't have any of that on there. So in order for it to go into the car and bolt up to the bracket and the master cylinder, you know, it had to be done. So the, the shit you got to do to make shit work. So here's the automatic pedal. The difference is, uh, so about this bend right here where my thumb is, is about the same, then after that it gets different. Um, the, the manual pedal is gonna, has more of a bend towards the, uh, towards the right, and obviously the foot pad is a lot smaller. I guess we, I guess we could have gotten away with modifying the, the automatic brake pedal. Um, it just would have been a lot of work. Uh, possible cutting and welding for the foot pad heating and beating the, the pedal itself it's whatever we'll hang on to it um, if anybody wants to buy it let me know you can have it for fucking cheap but anyways uh, the manual brake pedal is good to go we'll go ahead and throw that in put the little uh, foot pad back on it and then I can button up the interior and then, then we're gonna call it a day like we said for like what the eighth time today mm -hmm. But luckily, uh, the sun kind of went away. We got a break. We had a little bit of rain, so it cooled off a lot. So I think we can keep going. So we'll see uh, what we feel like doing after this break pedal. You wanna explain to the viewers what just right. happened? Round fucking two. The pin that goes through the for the master cylinder to the pedal. This pin that goes through, where's it at? Did I lose it? Right here. On this one, so the manual brake pedal came with two holes. This one, which was way too big for this pin, and then that one which was originally too small for the pin. So I just had to spend like fucking half an hour finding the perfect drill bit and then drilling it out so this pin will fit perfectly in there. So now, now we are ready to install this brake pedal, hopefully, if I don't run into any other bullshit. So round two. On my way back home, we called it a day. Um, no, I got a lot done today, honestly. We uh, got the brake pedal situation figured out. Had to modify it a little bit to get it to work. Got the fuel line hooked up, so she's ready for fuel. Uh, well, it's not fully hooked up. I left the end loose so that once we get power to the fuel pump, I can kind of flush out that line and because. Uh, that line was just kind of left open in his backyard where that uncovered. So there's no telling like any spiders or fucking ants and shit got in there. Uh, we gotta get a new one of those uh, external fuel filter cartridges. Clean that out real good. Um, we just don't want to clog up these injectors and make sure everything's right for the first time we fire up this car. We don't want any fuel issues. Other than that, man, we uh, just 
threw on the air filter. I know that's Mickey Mouse. We threw in some more of those engine bay uh, dress up bolts. And got the, the harness bar halfway complete. Uh, he forgot some of the hardware at home. So next time he comes back, he's gonna, he's gonna drop that off. So I can go ahead and finish installing that. And then get those Takata harnesses in. The interior is gonna be, it's gonna be fire. I'm excited. Uh, other than that, man, that's that's pretty much it for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, like, comment, subscribe, and shout out to the usual Ryan Celsius for the music, Gonzi Tuning in New Jersey, Princess Motorsports for. Uh, any performance parts you need, 2J, 1J, 7M related. I think you can even do other platforms too. He'll be linked down in the description. Um, custom coatings, powder coating in Opalaka, Florida. Check them out, they do awesome work. I'm gonna drop a link to the Instagram down below in the description as well. And that's pretty much it. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Uh, I know tomorrow I have to go to my homeboy Ducky's house. He has a little D21 pickup and I gotta go adjust the timing chain on it because it's got a rough idle, sometimes it doesn't wanna start and I, I believe the timing might be off by one tooth on the camshaft. So we'll check that out, see what's going on with that tomorrow. And until then, peace, later.